Welcome to 11 One Notes, where we're going to be talking about angles and lines and their relationship. Um, some very important terms are in the box that's provided at the top of your page. All of these terms are very important, so please listen as I explain each one and maybe get your own highlighter and follow along. Parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines that never touch. Um, they are in the same plane, which is very important to know they're coplanar, and they never touch. There are lines that never touch that are not coplanar, called skew lines, but we'll save that for geometry class. So for our purposes, our lines are always in the same plane, and if they never touch, we call those parallel, and we abbreviate parallel with this symbol. Perpendicular lines intersect, but they don't only just intersect, they intersect at a 90 degree angle, making that very special. And we abbreviate perpendicular with this symbol. So lines that intersect at a right angle are called perpendicular. Now be careful, this next term is not called vertical lines, they're called vertical angles. So any intersecting lines can make vertical angles. So here we just have two random lines that intersect. And the angles that are vertical are angle 1 and angle 3. Notice how they kind of come together and make a little point. You can make them into little mice if you wanted to. Those are vertical angles. And then also angle 2 and angle 4 are vertical. And vertical angles are equal. And that's what this is saying. Congruent. That symbol means equal. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 3, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, and those are vertical. The next big word is adjacent angles. Adjacent just means beside. Uh, you can't see me, but I have a dog sitting beside me on my sofa. So we are adjacent to each other. So angle 1 and angle 2 are beside each other. Now what this is saying is that if I added angle 1 and angle 2 together, they make the bigger angle ABC. So angle 1 plus angle 2 makes angle ABC. And that's just a little word, new word called adjacent angles. The next two words are very important. You'll hear these a lot. Complementary angles versus supplementary angles. Complementary angles add up to equal 90 degrees. Uh, there's several mnemonics for remembering that, but I always say, oh, you're looking very right today. Well, if you're looking right, then you're making a 90 degree angle, um, and that's complementary. However, complementary angles do not have to be adjacent. Here we have angle 1 and angle 2 adjacent and making 90 degrees. But I could have an angle over here that is um, 30 degrees. Then I could have another angle on another side of my paper that is um, 60 degrees, and I could call this angle 1 and this angle 2. Are angle 1 and 2 complementary? Absolutely, because together they add up to be 90 degrees. All right, and the next term is called supplementary angles. And a good way to remember supplementary angles, you skateboarder dudes, uh, probably, you know, talk about sup dude I can do a 180 on my skateboard so supplementary angles add up to be 180 degrees now these supplementary angles happen to be adjacent so they're making a straight line um, so again they do not necessarily have to be sitting beside each other there could be a 100 degree angle here and then there could be an 80 degree angle over there and angle, we'll call them 4 and 5, and is angle 4 and angle 5, are they supplementary? Absolutely, because together they make 180. But here is the number one trickiest question that you're going to hear about supplementary and complementary angles. Let me show you a trick, a trick question. Let's see, 30 plus... Um, 70 plus 80. Are those uh, supplementary angles? Let's see. 30 plus 70 makes 100 plus 80. 
they total 180 degrees. So most students, if they're not listening to this video, would say, yes, those are supplementary angles. But I want you to remember supplementary angles are two angles that add up to be 180. The same thing is true with complementary angles, only two angles. So maybe write that little two in there to remind you it's got to be two angles that add up to be 180 and two angles that add up to be 90. So if you have more than two, even though they add up to be 180, you'll say no, these are not supplementary angles. All right, let's see how they're going to ask us questions about these terms in our, in our exercises. It says, in the figure at the right, classify the relationship between the pairs of angles shown and then find the value of x. Well, I notice that these two angles are adjacent. They're sitting beside each other. And what else do we notice about them? Oh, there's a very important little box right there. So together, those adjacent angles, there's two of them, they add up to equal 90 degrees. So these are adjacent complementary angles. Okay, and x plus 34, they add up to equal 90 degrees. So we'll subtract 34 from both sides and x equals um, 56 degrees. Okay, moving on down. Again, classify them by their sides and angles. So you may be working ahead. These are vertical angles. Remember how I made two little noses rubbing together there? I don't know what you want to picture that as, but 102 degrees is X. Those are vertical angles. Again, we have another pair of complementary angles. x plus 20 equals 90, subtract 20, and x equals 70 degrees. All right, these are supplementary, making a straight line. See that straight line right there? So supplementary. Oh, another way to remember supplementary and complementary is that C comes before S in the alphabet, and 90 comes before 180 when you're counting. So that might be uh, an easier way to remember other than my complement and supplement idea. All right, so X is 60 degrees. Again, we have vertical. That's so easy. I hope y'all think this is easy. All right, so let's flip over to the next page. All right, so some more terms that we're going to need to know on the back of uh, your notes all relate to parallel lines. They're special angles in relation to parallel lines. So here we have two lines. They do not have names, but they are parallel. Typically, most books will have some special arrows on there that signify that those are meant to be parallel lines. The line that passes through two parallel lines is called the transversal, and that's an important word to know. The transversal cuts two parallel lines, and when the transversal appears, it makes these special angles that we're going to learn, all of these special angles. So I'm going to take my highlighter, and I'm going to highlight the inside of the parallel lines. When I highlight it in yellow, the angles that, that are covered in yellow are 3, 4, 5, and 6. And those are called interior angles. They're inside the parallel lines. I'm going to take my green highlighter and I'm going to highlight outside the parallel lines. And when I do the outside in green, those are the exterior 
angles for these parallel lines, one, two, seven, and eight, okay? Now the next term is called alternate interior angles. So they're interior angles and they're alternate. Alternate means on opposite sides or alternating sides of the transversal. So angle five alternates with angle three and likewise angle four alternates with angle six. Those are your alternate and they're in the interior of the parallel lines. Alternate exterior angles would be angle eight and it alternates with angle two. They're on the exterior, they're both in the green, but they have to be on opposite sides of the transversal. And another pair of alternate exterior angles would be angle one and it alternates with uh, angle seven. They're on alternate sides of the transversal. So my picture's getting very busy, but I'm hoping that you're following along as I mark them to see that I'm also marking them the same way, and that is on purpose. It's very intentional. All right, corresponding angles. Now those are gonna be hard to mark, but let me talk to you. If, if you and I are corresponding with each other, we have to be, um, go in the same direction. If I'm talking about, look in my upper left corner. If you just now looked in the upper left corner of the screen, then we are corresponding. Because I told you to look in the upper left corner. That's me telling you, look up, up there. You looked up there, so we are corresponding. So let's look at which ones are corresponding. It says here, they're in the same position. Okay, we're looking in the same direction on the parallel lines in relation to the transversal. So one and five, let's find those. One, oh, look, look up, and five. Oh, five is looking up. So here's angle five and angle one, and those are called corresponding. Um, angle two and six, two says look over here, six says, oh yeah, I'm looking over there, and those are corresponding. So likewise, Three corresponds with seven, because they're both looking down. And four corresponds with eight, because they're also looking down. So I hope that helps you remember uh, my little analogy about corresponding with each other. So let's see how we're going to have questions about all these terms. When a transversal intersects two parallel lines, oh, by the way, that's what I started to tell you. I marked them on purpose because when a transversal intersects parallel lines, alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles, and corresponding angles are all congruent. What does that big word congruent mean? They're equal. So all of these that we've just labeled here are equal. So let's look at uh, a less busy picture like they provided in our first example. All right, lines F and N are parallel. V is the transversal. The measure of angle three is 100 degrees. And it wants me to find the measure of angle one and angle six. Well, I could find the measure of all the angles. One corresponds with three. Six is alternate interior to three. And just for kicks, I thought I'd go ahead and tell you that angle 8 corresponds with 6 and is vertical to 3 and is alternate exterior to 1. So all four of those angles have to be 100 degrees. Well, if we have a straight line, then we know 7 has to be 80 degrees. And 7 and 2 are alternate interior, so 2 would have to be 80. 2 and 5 are vertical. 5 and 4 are alternate exterior, and 4 and 3 are supplementary, and 4 and 7 are vertical, and the story can just keep going on and on and on and on and on. So if you know one angle of uh, parallel lines and a transversal, then you know all eight angles. And I want to leave the rest for you to do, finish the rest for homework, okay?
This one's going to be decimals, but that's okay. Those are the two angles, so you already know what the measurements are. See if you can decide which one of these angles.